St. Andrews has had a long tradition of supporting uh, scouting organizations, including uh, Boy Scout Troop 1849, where our sponsorship has lasted for longer than 40 years, and Cub Scout Pack 684, which includes boys and now girls, um, mainly from Sankster Elementary School. In addition to that, uh, the church supports um, meetings for other scout groups, including Cub Scout Pack 1344, and numerous Girl Scout meetings as well. Happy Scout Sunday, and thank you, St. Andrews, for your support. Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrews, and welcome to Scout Sunday. A scout is reverent. A scout is reverent toward God. They are faithful in their religious duties. They respect the beliefs of others. On behalf of Pack 1683, Cub Scout Pack 684, and Scouts BSA Troop 1849, we would like to thank St. Andrews and the parishioners for all of their support of scouting throughout the years. Thank you very much. Hello, St. Andrews. I'm Rebecca Umberger, and I'm on my last few days of the Fellowship Commission on the vestry, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday at 11.15 for our annual meeting. Um, so again, the meeting will be held at 11.15 a.m. on Sunday. The links are in the emails that Emily has sent out on Friday and um, on Sunday. Um, as far as the audio, um, everyone will be muted when you enter the meeting. Um, we will ask that you please stay muted um, during the meeting just to avoid any background uh, noise. Exceptions will be made um, when we open the floor up for questions and comments. Um, we do ask that you unmute your microphone at that time and then put it back on mute when you're finished asking your questions. Um, as far as video, we're going to leave that up to you. As far as motions go, when motions are being voted on, we will use um, a quick um, poll feature on Zoom. Um, the poll will pop up on your screen and you can vote yes or no. And we'll do this a few times um, during the meeting. You will only vote uh, once for each of these polls. So if you're sharing a device, only one person will be able to complete that poll. Um, all votes are anonymous. And um, one thing uh, we will be voting on is making a change to the bylaws to add the property commission as a standing committee. So please read the proposed chapter in Friday's email prior to the meeting, and that will help you become educated on what we're voting for on that. Um, so there, the vestry vote's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, we'll be using a different type of polling. So for voting for the new vestry members, we will use a Google form poll and the link will be posted on the Zoom chat. Um, so click on the link to vote. So since more than one person will probably be sharing the same device, um, when you submit your vote, there will be an option to vote again. This is so that multiple people can vote on the same device. How clever. Um, and remember, one vote per person, and you need to be 16 years or older and a member of the um, Episcopal Church. And all votes are anonymous. So there is no way that we can tell using this technology who has voted for whom. So no worries there. And we really do encourage patients, you know, as everybody has had during this pandemic. So uh, lots of moving parts going on in the background, lots of hard work uh, from Emily and the team. Thank you. Bye-bye. Aloha, St. Andrews. I am so excited to join you in this community. Thank you for your welcomes that I have already received and this wonderful positive energy I just feel at St. Andrews um, that you are ready to get out and um, <clears throat> proclaim the gospel to all those you see uh, within your community and outside. My name is Reverend Colleen Schiefelbein. I know Schiefelbein looks like, um, can be intimidating and looks like a mess. I have vowels that go E-I and I-E, and what do you do with that? Um, but Schiefelbein is German, and so you pronounce the second vowel. So it may not follow English rules, but it does follow German rules. So it's she full bein You pronounce the E, the U, and the I, Schiefelbein. 
You can also call me Reverend Colleen or Colleen. Um, those will work too. So I graduated from seminary in May in a virtual graduation, which is not the norm. Um, but that seems appropriate now as I look back because I don't seem to follow the norm in much. I can list countless ways that I um, don't have the normal right down the center kind of life or family. Um, but the positive thing of not walking down the center of the group, um, walking a little um, off kilter, is that I see opportunity everywhere. And I see hope and joy um, all over, even in the midst of um, this depression and these uncertain times, um, I'm always looking for opportunity and ways that we can um, make this better. So um, I really look forward to finding opportunities together with you where we can go out within St. Andrew's community, within your larger community and the world, where we can proclaim the gospel of Jesus together, where we can um, support one another and where we can follow the example that Jesus has shown us to love one another and truly mean that um, and work on those areas where we're struggling and we can work together on that. So again, thank you for welcoming me to St. Andrews. I am so excited to be here and I cannot wait to meet each one of you. Good morning, St. Andrews. Welcome to our worship. Today is a very big day. I know we have the Super Bowl later, right? But that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, it's Scout Sunday, which is amazing. Thank you, all the Scouts. Let's give a big hand to all the Scouts. And raise your hand if you are a Scout or have a Scout in your family. Wonderful, awesome work. And while these things are very big, that's not what I'm talking about. It is the big day, the day of our annual meeting. It will take place at 1115 right after worship. And we encourage you to be there for this fruitful meeting that will take place today. Uh, my sermon today will include a portion of an annual address, but it is in the context of the good news. Now, before we get fully going this morning, we have a big day. I would like to give a quick homily for all children of all ages. Now, today's gospel, Jesus and his friends go into one of the friend's houses. His name is Simon. Now, his mother-in-law is very sick. She has a fever. She can't get out of bed. She's lying down and can't get out. So all of the friends hurry and they go tell Jesus that she's sick and needs his help. Now think about that. They knew that Jesus could help. And then Jesus comes over and lifts her up. And the fever is gone. She feels better. By the way, for all children of all ages, that word lift up. Same word used when Jesus is raised from the dead. Lift it up. But the very first thing that she does when she is raised up from the bed and feels better is she goes and shares Jesus's love. She serves, but to serve is to share love, to treat others as you would like to be treated, and to work to spread the good news that we hear here each and every Sunday morning and every time we work and open our mouths in prayer. That is our job. So when we are low and we need help, Jesus extends a hand. And our faith brings us forward. And that's how we go forward out into the whole world, sharing Jesus' love. Amen. And now, wherever you are on your faith journey, wherever you are worshiping with us this morning, whenever you're watching, know that we are worshiping one. 
together. Our worship this morning begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, or you can just follow along worshiping online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us now proceed to the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely they are planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries off, carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these, who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength and shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Psalm 147 together. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. To the Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of all the stars and calls them by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the slowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with the clouds and prepares rain for earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains, green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for the flocks and herds for the many young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. Here ends the psalm. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not if of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law. Although I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you did not know Bishop Lee, the previous diocesan bishop in the Diocese of Virginia, he was extremely hardworking, he still is, and efficient. It was my job as his clerk, in addition to other administrative responsibilities in the office, to drive him to every single event he attended in the diocese. It was an incredible opportunity, and it was amazing how his schedule would work. It would work out precisely down to the minute. And if you know Bishop Lee, this is not surprising. It was a consistent routine. I would pick him up at a particular time, and we would be off to the next church visitation, meeting, scheduled event, pastoral care meeting, board meeting, or something else that popped up on the schedule. It was a persistent schedule, and it included few times when I would actually visit here. You could usually tell me apart. I was the one in the back that would collect his crozier and his vestments and prepare him for when he might depart for the next meeting or event. I am still struck by the persistence and, in the midst of a calculated schedule, the attention to details and his ability to adjust as life and plans changed and often without much notice. This past year, the steadfast faith and persistence of our parish, it shined so bright. Within the annual report, we could speak of so many things that we did not do. However, when our buildings closed, the church certainly did not close. Our ministry not only continued, it persisted and it adjusted as necessary. This reading from Isaiah today comes from that middle section where in chapter 40, when the people of Israel are in exile, they are removed from their homeland and they are reminded in this time of God's power, presence, and comfort. We are reminded of these words, and we are comforted as a displaced people today. For those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. These difficulties and sufferings, which may normally occur in a year, are compounded by the onset of the pandemic and its endurance. And we have certainly felt that pain here. We have felt it with our Eucharistic fast. 
the absence of our regular fellowship events, the need for interpersonal uh, conversations in person. We have also experienced this profoundly with the deep loss of our brother, John Jaska. And these are just some of the wounds. The pandemic in these past 11 months revealed and made fresh wounds in our own lives and in the lives and in the round the world. This is when we turn to these words from Isaiah and are given hope, especially when we are viewing them in light of the incarnation and resurrection to come. In the midst of this pain, St. Andrews, let us also remember the incredible ministry which we did continue this past year as our buildings closed, as I said, but we remained open. Remember we began this year, 2020 or last year, in discernment? We were there. I was in discernment too. And I want to thank the discernment team for their incredible work. Our chair, January, Bob, Joe, Alice, Betsy, Deb, Pam, and Andrew, thank you. This was hard, prayerful work. And of course, the work of discernment extended not only to the vestry, but to the whole parish. By the way, discernment team, I still look forward to that dinner one day. I also want to take a moment to thank in our leadership, Mark Foster, the acting senior warden and unofficial parliamentarian who helped transition as I, me transition coming on board. And I am deeply grateful for the ministry of our senior warden, Christy Dasher, and our junior warden, Doug Wood. For better or for worse, they are on my speed dial. Thank you. These are signs of things in our ministry that continue. One of the primary features of our discernment was around worship and spirituality. We began this year with a set schedule of plan for this year to come, and I was impressed by the published annual calendar. Of course, we needed to shift with the onset of the pandemic, and we went to worship online on Facebook and YouTube. We had outdoor worship and the plans for how to gather indoors. We do have plans ready when our diocese and health metrics so permit. And we have not only persisted, but found ways to worship that we have not previous, previously considered in the past. And we look forward to the day when we might safely regather together. And we will continue to follow the guidance of our health department and of our diocese. Pastoral care and fellowship are hallmarks of our community. And they have adjusted and have been sorely needed this year. I am encouraged to see how we respond as a community to those whose wounds need this loving balm of Christ's presence in each other even when we cannot physically be close to each other. I do recognize, however, that this may not be a uniform experience, and I ask us to seek in the year to come how we might continue to cultivate this ministry in our parish. There's also never been a time when our outreach ministry was so needed in the communities in which we work and serve. And it is a testament to our faith that we dedicate so many of our resources to this part of our discipleship. From our in-person hypothermia shelter in 2020 to look what we just had this past week, and it was so needed. How might we build upon these strengths of outreach, the relational components especially, in our community going forward? There is so much we could speak about that occurred in 2020, and I do commend the reading of our annual report to you. But I also ask you to continue to tell stories and talk to each other. And we so look forward when we can go back to normal. We can put all of this behind us, right? However, when the Israelites returned, it was not as it was. It never will be the same. And it wasn't the same for them. It was also not the same when Christ was crucified. Jesus today in our reading, our gospel, has an incredibly successful ministry. And it's throughout Capernaum. He heals Simon's mother-in-law and she gets up and serves. 
And the disciples beckon him to return because they are looking for him. Those inklings of resurrection present in that ministry. But where does Jesus go? He's out on the outskirts praying. He doesn't go where he is popular, per se. And he could have, he could have built a mega church there in Capernaum. But he goes to where he is needed. He goes to the next ministry building upon what is already there and what has taken place. And the ministries thrived where he was. And we have done incredible work as our church, St. Andrews. Amen, yes, to that we have. This place is awesome. And if you are newer, I cannot wait for you to experience more of it. We too have an opportunity for the church of the future. And this does not mean that we are abandoning waves of the past. Do not worry. But it is an opportunity to look at the wounds and listen to where Christ is calling us. For what do we really hunger? For what do we really not hunger? What do we not miss that much? We have come out of this time of transition and into a time to continue to tend to our ministry and prepare for the future. And we will need to rest. I know it is uh, has a time when that is necessary, as necessary as the ministry itself. It is a ministry. Young families in particular, I hear you. Grandparents who have had to step in. And I particularly am thinking and praying for those who are more isolated and alone during this time. And this is all part of our ministry to tend to these wounds and needs, our own and those of others. This year, St. Andrews, I ask us to remain flexible, continuing to adjust as we listen for the Holy Spirit's calling in this ever-changing world. I ask us to continue following Christ's love. That's right, one together. And I ask us to seek ways to deepen and carry out our discipleship, especially with these new opportunities that are present. So Bishop Lee had an incredible ministry here in Virginia, and we are grateful for the bishops that have come afterwards. Bishop Lee could have easily retired, and I believe he, he technically did, actually. However, his ministry didn't remain here. It took him to Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. It took him to the American Cathedral in Paris. It took him to the General Theological Seminary in New York. And it took him as the assisting bishop in the Diocese of East Carolina. Yes, he was and is beloved here. But he continued to carry his ministry and serve in new and wonderful ways. God is calling us within our ministry to continue our work and into new and wonderful parts of our discipleship. God knows us and God knows you. Jesus redeems and loves us and Jesus has redeemed and loves you. The Holy Spirit moves through us and calls all of us individually and collectively into deeper ministry. St. Andrews to this community for our mission and for our continued discipleship in the gospel to carry out the mission of Jesus Christ. We can say, thanks be to God. And God's people say, amen. Let us recite the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now the prayers for the people. Let us pray for the church and the world. We pray for this community, your faithful gathered online, that we may walk in your way of love and manifest your love to the world. Lord, shine your light on our prayers. We pray for our nation and for the peaceful transition as new elected officials begin office. We pray for all who support this service for our common good. We pray for all nations of the world that those in authority will work toward peace and equity for all people. Lord, shine your light on our prayers. We pray for justice and peace on the earth, and in particular for racial reconciliation. We pray for people everywhere, that their lives may be full, that their families may be secure, that their hearts may be filled with your peace. Lord, shine your light on our prayers. We pray for guidance in the pandemic, and especially for all who struggle. We pray for teachers, families, those who are alone, and those who live lonely in the midst of the pandemic. We pray for those who struggle emotionally, financially, physically, and spiritually. Lord, shine your light on our prayers. We pray for and give thanks for the hypothermia shelter. We give thanks for the many gifts and donations made for those in need. We pray for the FACET staff and continue to give them thanks. We pray for all of the guests. We ask for continued guidance to carry out your mission. Lord, shine your light on our prayers. We pray for all those who are suffering in ways that are known or hidden to us. We pray for those who struggle in this life and for those whose light is dimming. For those who are ill and those who care for them. For those born today and for those who will die. We pray especially for Eve, Tina, John and Janet, Carol, Chris, Gloria, Teresa, Larry, Dale, Donna, Katie, Steve and Solange, Garson, Lori, Bill, Hugh, Susan, Jesse, Linda and Ed, Claire, Clay, Tom, Jack, Janet, Nancy, Lisa, Gunnar and Heike, Regina, Sarah, Mary, Pam, Terry, Charles, Anne, Rich, Kate, Lloyd, Kristen, Douglas, Mike, and Susan. Lord, shine your light on our prayers. We pray for all who have died, lifting our prayers for those who have died due to the pandemic. We pray particularly today for Robin Horton, sister of Tracy Brown, and Andrew Riley, a friend of Chris Umberger.
Lord, shine your light on our prayers. O oh Lord, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and, uh, and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves we are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And God's people say, and also with you. All right, this morning, go ahead and send out the sign of your peace emails, text chains. And I do encourage you again this Sunday to send out the peace to somebody that you have not yet sent it out to. Extend a sign of the peace as you greet people at the annual meeting if you're gathering beforehand or afterwards. Greet each other as a sign of the peace at any time, whenever you think of it, knowing that we are extending Christ's love to the world and recognizing the presence of Christ here. At this time for the offertory, we give thanks for so many gifts, and in particular this week, we give thanks for the many offerings given to the hypothermia shelter. And thank you so much for all of the ministry, the donations, the labor, the trips back and forth over to Tyson's Corner. And for all of that ministry, uh, Steve Koss, especially thank you to you this year and our entire ministry team, our partners in faith from the Peace Islamic Center, the Flores United Methodist Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and the other faith communities and everyone in this parish who came together in service. Walk in love as Christ loved us, who gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. you are, think of the space where you are at that moment, usually during the Eucharist, when we celebrate and pray the Lord's Prayer. Think about who you're sitting next to. If you're in the room, hold hands. Extend hands if you can at this time. And know that if there's no person there, Christ's loving hand will reach out to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. And now today, we pray in particular for our annual meeting. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with those who take counsel at St. Andrew's for our annual meeting, for the renewal and mission of your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory, 
Guide us to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. And God's people say, thanks be to God. Alleluia. I look forward to seeing you in a few moments at the annual meeting.